Excellency Mr. Abdullah Shahid, President of the 76th Session of the UN General Assembly. Mr. David Boyd, UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and the Environment. Distinguished delegates, panelists, representatives of, of major groups and stakeholders, good morning, good afternoon. Let me start first by thanking you for the invitation to participate in this very important meeting. It provides us with an opportunity for a collective reflection on how to accelerate the implementation of multilateral environmental commitments in a more holistic and systemic manner. Over the past 50 years, the world experienced significant economic and social progress. Hundreds of millions of people were lifted from poverty and access to education and health was improved increasing the well-being and capabilities of many generations. However, three interconnected crises, climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution are putting the health of our planet, of our economies, and our social well-being at risk. The burden of environmental decline is felt by everyone, but disproportionately by the poor, by the vulnerable and looms even larger over today's youth and future generations. And the core driver of this planetary crisis is unsustainable consumption and production. Cognizant of these challenges, at UNEA, we recognize the need to act now. Member states prioritize policies that can have multiplier effects and allow progress. And these policies would include implementing solutions that tackle interconnected drivers and impacts, strengthening the science policy interface, environmental governance and foster rule of law, promoting and strengthening ecosystem-based approaches and also nature-based solutions. We also want to mainstream and coordinate conservation, restoration and sustainable use of biodiversity into sectoral policies and programs. We want to promote transformative and systemic changes and policies that address several environmental, economic, and social challenges simultaneously. The time is now. And last but not least, we want to transform our current economic systems and redirect finance flows and investments to this time support sustainable development. According to the international resource panels, Sustainable consumption and sustainable production, supported by circular economy approaches and other sustainable policy models, can, among others, become real drivers of poverty alleviation and economic development. And they could increase incomes by an average of 8 to 13 percent in low and medium income countries in by, by 2060, and by 5, 4 percent in high income countries. It can also help mitigate climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions by up to 90% by 2060 and have positive impacts on biodiversity, health, and pollution. Pursuing circular economy as a pathway for achieving sustainable consumption and production pattern contributes to addressing climate change, biodiversity loss, land degradation, water stress impacts, pollution and human health impacts. Collaboration in research, in capacity building, knowledge management and sharing of best practices for the, for the promotion of innovative pathways for sustainable consumption and production facilitated by UNEP, including through the 10-year framework of programs on sustainable consumption and production, will support member states in the implementation of policies towards sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, change is possible. We can promote consistent shifts in policies, governance, in regulation, in infrastructure, in, uh, in our investment and business models towards a just and informed transition to circularity and encourage the rechanneling of financial flows to serve the attainment of sustainable development goals through innovative, holistic approaches that truly value nature. Let me share with you a very concrete example. 
We have over 65% of greenhouse gas emissions that are generated from the materials that are necessary to bring products and services to the point of consumption, with less than a third that are associated with energy consumption at end use. Implementing circular economy under an ambitious scenario in just five key areas, in cement, in aluminium, in steel, plastics and food, can eliminate almost half of the emissions from the production of these goods, 9.3 billion tons of CO2 by 2050. That's equivalent to cutting all transport emissions to zero. Ladies and gentlemen, change at scale is possible. We need to act now and ensure active involvement of everybody to promote the shift towards sustainability. All actors have individual, complementary and nested roles to play in bringing about cross-sectoral and economy-wide transformative change. Thank you very much.